This is Coach Schumann here for the Success for Life podcast. Um, I'm here with a very special guest, Chris Martinez. He has an unbelievable process from a sales standpoint that's helped uh, grow his car sales business at one of the top locations out there in Texas from 150 cars to 1,000 cars a month. He's wrote a couple of books. He now also has developed a software that's unique uh, to the auto sales space and actually probably applicable eventually uh, to everybody that's looking to generate generate leads, generate contacts, and generate business. Um, welcome, Chris. Man, I'm, I'm glad to be on, man. It's uh... – you know, it, it, you, I couldn't have said it any better the way how you were able to outline it that quick. So that's that's good stuff. That's kind of, you know, been my my life for the last 15 years. You know what I mean? So it's good stuff. Absolutely. I, I, wanna talk, I wanted to have um, everyone understand a little bit more of your background. So, I, you know, I summarized obviously quickly, um, you know, some, some of the things you've done. But uh, tell us a little bit about your background, how you got into to car sales, how you got into that part of the business. Well, you know, it's it's funny because my my twin brother, I have a twin brother, by the way, and uh, he was he was being recruited by a, a car dealership because he was a property manager, and I I was in El Paso moving back to Las Vegas with my my family because they're in construction, and my brother was a property manager at an apartment place. And when I, I talked to him, he said, Hey, you know what, before you go back with our uncle that works in construction, why don't you go, you know, talk to this company? You know, I, I forget what the name of it, CarMax, CarMax. He's all, uh, you know, why don't you go check it out? You know, it seemed pretty interesting. They've been recruiting me for the last couple of weeks now. Um, maybe it's something, maybe it's not, but check it out. And so before I went to with my uncle, I said, man, I really don't want to break my back, you know, laying tile and doing all this other stuff so I said you know I'm gonna just go check it out and I walked in there and I said hey guys I understand you guys have been recruiting my brother but I'm you know I'm your I'm your second best option right now and uh I'm I'm ready to help you guys um uh, you know do what you do I don't even know what you're doing they've never had one in Las Vegas so they had it at a like a double tree hotel <laughs> and uh so I never I didn't even know what it was I I just thought it it was some kind of customer service thing that I, and, you know, I felt like I could help people out. And uh, it was kind of funny because I didn't even know it was a car dealership. So I walk in and sure enough, they, they hired me on the spot and uh, it was kind of history after that, man. It's been good. Life is good. So car sales is, is such an interesting business to me. And, and there's, there's uh, we talked about in the pre, you know, pre-interview that uh, I feel like it's a really tough business. I think the guys that, are able to transition and sell a lot in car sales, probably have the ability to do a lot of different things because it is so sales intensive. And it's, you know, one of the things having been in business for a long time now, um, the number one thing and the hardest thing to find is, a, is a, an excellent salesperson. It is by far the hardest thing to find. Somehow I always find myself doing all the selling. <laughs> I'm turning over the sales guys left to right, you know. So I, I, I'd love for you to share with people um, you know, what is it about sales that you really like? And then, um, you know, how you really started to build yourself a book in, in the car sales space? Well, you know, it's funny because I remember a long ago, I had a buddy of mine tell, tell me that he looked like I was dressed like a car salesman. So he said, man, you look like a car salesman. And I remember telling him, F you, man, I'm not a car salesman. And <laughs> You know, who knew that was foreshadowing or what that was going to be like later on in life, I'd be a car salesman. But, you know, I think it's, um, you know, I think at the end of the day, it's really just about the people, people business. You know, people forget that, you know, if you build relationships with people, I mean, that's that's where it really starts. And, and if you can identify with your customers and, you know, mirror how they, they work and, and just kind of just work for them instead of trying to push something down real hard. I think it, it really helps separate you from everyone else, you know, because there's a lot of dealerships that I've seen that have some bad apples, right? It's not the dealer. I think it's some of the people that they hire that, that give the, the, the industry a, a bad, bad rap sometimes, because I think there's a lot of good people out there that are, are just trying to earn a living and, you know, trying to treat people right and kind of trying to guide them into the right vehicle for their needs. But you know, there are some of those bad apples that we find from time to time. I've had to personally let some of those people go from, from our organization 
Um, but I think it, it happens in any organization, really. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, when, if you focus on your people and try to help develop them and, and train and, you know, like the Grant Cardones of the world, and right. there's a lot of really good people out there that are training and, and teaching them. And, you know, although there's some, some people that kind of take it to that next level and, and make, it, make it feel cutthroat, um, I think some of the, you know, at the end of the day, if you, you treat people right, you're, you, it starts with your people. You know, and if, if you treat them right, they should be able to treat your customers right, too. Well, you're a twin, just like Greg Cardone as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy, huh? That's crazy. So you, you share some uh, similarities from that standpoint. Have you actually um, worked with him or his tra- uh, some of his sales training process? I always see... Um, that's one of the things, obviously, that's a core of his business, one of his businesses. Yeah, we've actually, we signed up with his program a couple of years ago. Um, I've got to, I've got, I had a, the opportunity to shake his hand a couple of times. Um, I actually went to one of his conferences, was a pretty, um, it was pretty spot on. I mean, he, he brought a bunch of good speakers and they kind of helped me go get, take it to that next level, if you will. You know, I, I think that uh, I've read his story and, you know, he wrote a couple books. He, he built the software. Um, then he started going into sales training and um, or he's been doing sales training for a long time. But part of it, how he started his whole program is, you know, he he, he got into the software game and got into sales, wrote books. And so I kind of mirrored a lot of the stuff that he did. And that's why I felt compelled not only was the information I going to I was going to give to people valuable, but I felt like if I could write a book, I can get into, you know, doing some of the things he was doing uh, that, you know, maybe I can get some attention on myself because the software I built, I mean, it's, it, it was built out of necessity. I had to, I, I, there's no software out there that even comes close to what we're doing. And, you know, I, I, I ran into a little bit of money selling the amount of cars that we sell. And I said, you know, I'm just going to build my own. You know, it's a, I, I, I literally was not even trying to build one. I just literally was saying, you know what, I'm going to see what's out there and see if they can do what I, I have an idea for. And nobody could do it. So I said, you know what, I mean, how much would it really take? You know, and then before you know it, after a couple of years of investing a ton of money, that it, it took a lot. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about, um, well, let's go two things. Number one. Um, cause I want to talk about the software, uh, before I talk about it, what, what are some of the, the, the sales techniques that you like, like, you know, anyone's going, when they hear 150 to a thousand at a dealership, I mean, that's a monumental number. What is that? Five, six, six times, uh, six X sales, not quite 10 X, but it's on the way. Right. So, yes, sir. Uh, especially the car, car sales business. So what are some of like the techniques that maybe you use or strategies you use to, a, acquire more leads. Obviously, that's a big part in sales. And I always, I always say, like, if you don't, like, if you don't have enough leads to pursue, you pursue those leads and you pursue those four, five, six times, and then, and then they say no. Well, then you're out, right? So how do you, how do you continue to get things in the pipeline, which might dictate into your your software, right? And then, and then how do you close those on a regular basis and get people to understand that you're the guy to go to? Well, you know, you, we established that we were. We, we wanted to, to make an impact here in the community. So we, we've been heavily involved in the community in, in every facet, um, whether it's charity or just, you know, community work. We're, we're constantly trying to, you know, you know, dig roots here. But more importantly, I mean, I think the business was always here. Um, there's, you know, there's quite a lot of people here in Austin, Texas. So um, part of it was just paying attention to what was already coming in. And then making, building your team, um, I think where most people fail is one, they stop training. And then two, they don't really try to grow, you know, and that's, that's kind of been what I've seen in, over the years and d- looking at different organizations and with, the, with now us having our software in different, different stores right now, I can see where there's a lot of need to, to train and, and to really uh, – point out the the areas of opportunity for these dealers um, because now I'm looking at it and I'm just thinking, man, they, these guys haven't been doing this, haven't been doing that. And, and I start looking at it and I'm just thinking, man, there's so much opportunity. They don't even understand it. You know, if you focus first on the customers you already have 
and nurture the customers you already have, I mean, you'll be able to increase your business right there because you, you focus on your referrals, you focus on building that community. And I mean, it's, it's kind of like what you've done in your, in, with your business, right? You, you, you built your relationships, you focus on that, and then you just kind of build on that. And it, it just kind of slowly, slowly keeps growing, but you, you have to keep staffing up at every level. You know, when we got to 200 cars a month, 300 cars, 400, every level there's a, there's, you're going to find some different, some different pains and you have to, you have to shore each, each one of those areas up and, and it, it just keeps going. And even where we're at right now, there's air, we have area of opportunity to keep growing, but you know, right now we've got some land issues that we're trying to find some, some more land. And, you know, we're kind of, you know, capped at, you know, the expansion at this point, because Austin has been such a, a huge growing economy that, I mean, to try to get a piece of land, I mean, you're talking just crazy money and you're thinking, man, how, how are we going to get a return on something like that right Right now? You know what I mean? So there's, so now it's even harder for us to get to that next level just because we've been running into things that I think I might've lost you for a second. Oh, but, oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, but every, every, it happens, right? Like every, yeah every level you got to keep growing, you know? And so like, when I look at what you've done, you're going to, you'll you're going to run into some areas that you're going to, you're like, man, how do I break that next ceiling? And, um, and it's just, you just got to keep evolving as you, as you grow. So uh, I think that's where, that's where most people fail. They, they stop. That evolving. Is. Well, and, and, and not only growing is uh, when a catastrophe happens. So like for us, we were Inc. 5,000 fastest growing company in, 2012 or 13 two years in a row and um and then our industry changed so at least in in the uh, um, evaluation space so the things that we did which were supremely important because of rules with the nta and stuff changed it and kind of moved it more towards where the colleges were made the college camps a little bit more important than what we were doing and so we had to continue to adjust. So we went through some down years where th that, like, and it's happened to me. I think this is the third time that's happened to me in my career. I used to own training facilities back in um, the, through 2011. But I saw locally that I couldn't expand the way that I wanted to and the return that I wanted to. So we started these new programs, which end up becoming bigger. And so then now 2014 through 2017 has been a whole transition to all new programs that we've been going through the last two years. And you take like a little dip in sales to hopefully, you know, go back up and get to where you have to be. And that's the hardest part because then there gets to be some like lean time. People. <laughs> you're making an insane amount of money. And then all of a sudden you're like, gotta be a little tight and control everything for a little while in order to be able to get back to where you got to go. So while you find new capital to go into a new enterprise, which we're actually doing and we've done very well. Um, but those transitions are tough and it, it's always hard. Like you don't want to end up being Toys R Us, right? You don't want Exactly. Wanna, I mean, I like to get to be as big as they are, but I don't want to be where um, you go backwards. You well, just, you know, it's crazy. You, you point that out. You point that out. I mean, literally I, I was I, in my quest to find more land down the street from me, a Sears, a Toys R Us, and some other big box is like closing its doors. And I'm like, man, I got a whole block now that I could choose from. So yep. we've got some, uh, we got some, our eyes on certain areas right now, and it's it might be opportunity for us to kind of get to that next level. So, but you know, I think that, you know, with all the new ride sharing and all the, I imagine in New York or New Jersey, there's this little bit more uh, to that effect, the, the car industry will probably change a little bit more drastically out there uh, than it will out here. Uh, just because Texas, everything, I mean, you need to gar buy a car to, to drive everywhere here. I mean, it, everything's so spread apart that it, it's not as easy as maybe in a city living area. Right. It, it, it makes more sense just to get an Uber every month, you know? Uh, absolutely. Well, eventually, <laughs> where, I live now, where I live now, you definitely need a car, but... Um, when I used to live right right over by New York City, we you know you you like I had one. You really didn't need it. Um, it, it it's one of those things. That's going to be an interesting thing from a car industry standpoint. How 
how that kind of all evolves out. It's the tough. It, that's one of those things. It's like you want to have a crystal ball. It's tough to figure out <laughs> like, how how fast is a, a driverless car is going to come into play and 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 where technology is going. And I guess that's a good segue to talk about um, the auto miner, which you know you've come up with. I think it's you know I just talked about how you always constantly have to be like. It's one of those things where. You start to get as soon as you start to get to the top on something. If you don't figure out the next thing that can help your business, you're going to go in, in, into a downslide. And um, you know, coming up with the auto miner is, is a perfect example uh, of adapting and figuring out new ways to do what you're doing. So tell me a little bit more about that. So we had a there's a, there's a couple of different tools out there, and how it actually started was I was printing out call lists. So I, we have a current database that I'd print out call lists and I'd, I'd hand it to my sales staff and I say, hey, here's a list, call these people, tell them, you know, we have an opportunity to get them out of their car, give them some money back, lower their payment, help them out. Actually a real value for the customer. Um, well, then, you know, a couple of days later, they'd ask me for another list and then I didn't know what list I had just printed out and I'd just print out the same one and they'd call the same people. Right. So then you start getting upset customers. Right. right. So then, you know, I, I also have a service department and we get about, you know, now we do, I mean, 7,000 customers a month out of our service facility. Um, but, you know, we used to reach out to them to remind them, hey, you got your next service appointment. It's due. Come on in. But, you know, I had my salespeople calling them. I had my service people calling them. So you have a lot of overlay and people getting upset. Well, someone just called me yesterday or, you know, so I was like, well, why isn't there a platform that have, that I can communicate with these clients on the same one. Right. And so they, I just couldn't, it, I couldn't wrap my head around that. I was like, why wouldn't we have a software for that? And so I said, you know what, it started there. And I said, I'm going to build it. I'm going to be able to create lists for my salespeople. I'm going to be able to create lists for my service people. And we're going to be able to communicate to my our customers more effectively. So it was a lot of manual stuff. So they would just pick up the phone and start calling. Well, then I started thinking, well, man, there's got to be an easier way to get to as many people as we do to get to, you know. And then SMS technology, I started thinking about. And then the, the voicemail marketing, I started thinking about. Um, so I could create a list with 100 people what would take my salesperson you know, maybe a day or two to call, I can make that same phone call in, you know, five minutes, you know, and that voicemail marketing, I get sent out and literally I'll get, you know, I'll send a hundred voicemails out and I'll get, you know, 30 people to call me back, 25 people, depending on the message. And then if I teach them how to ha handle those clients, you know, I, I've always been pretty strong at the phone. I'll just use my voice, you know, rather than a robot or doing any of that. And I'll send a voicemail. People call me back and I just start telling them why I called them. And then we end up selling cars off of it or getting them to remind them about their service appointment. Guess what? My retention went through the roof, you know, where the average dealer, you know, is like 48% retention in sales. I'm, you know, 55, 54%. In, wow. in sales retention. So just in that increase alone, you know, my revenue jumps up tremendously. So I've been able to continue to, to continue to grow my owner base. Uh, same thing for service. You know, we're in the, the eighties in, in retention where, you know, most dealers are, you know, in the seventies. So I, I, I easily can increase my either one sales and service and, but they kind of go hand in hand. You know, so the more people I generate to sales, it drives my service business. So, and most people, for whatever reason, just don't, aren't looking there, you know, and it's, it's funny because now I'm teaching them how I have to teach the dealers and my, my staff continually training because you got to know what to say when that customer calls back, you know, because we will get customers to call back, you know, every day. I mean, it's, Every time I send out a campaign, it's pretty incredible. The SMS technology that we have, I can't, I don't, I can't have enough salespeople to answer 
that technology, right? So I had to get an AI involved so that I could send out, when I send out a communication, the artificial intelligence will actually communicate with the client like it's a real, like a real conversation, you know, and they'll actually schedule the appointment and book it in our service department. So it's, uh, it's pretty incredible. You know, I, I've been able to not eliminate staff, but increase staff even more because now I'm just generating more business. And right, it's, the effect pretty... of what you're doing is is through the roof. So I, you know, what I find is really interesting. Um, when like, so if I make a sales call, uh, the hardest thing is getting people on the phone. Right? They don't recognize your number. They don't want like I, I do it myself all the time. Right? Yeah. Number shows up. I don't know who the heck it is. I don't pick it up because I get so many calls just of people that I do know that I'm trying to be efficient with my day. Mm -hmm. And not pick up calls of people that I don't know. Let them. I let them leave a message. I go listen to the message at when I'm convenient. Like if I'm eating lunch, I'll listen to my messages just to see if it's it's somebody that I should have gotten back to. And that's almost now other than texting. You know, obviously someone's going to text you if they know you, unless you send out a text. You know, text message, which is great. I mean, sometimes things come through that that I really need. But I find the voicemail thing really interesting because people don't pick up the phone anymore. And you leave a voice on them and what they're more likely to do is when they get a free moment, listen to five or six messages in bulk as opposed yeah. to interrupting their day. You know, that's what I do all the time. Yeah, no, absolutely. And then, and then I'll, I'll go and take action on it. I'm like, oh, I miss Chris Martinez's call. Shoot, I, you know, I, I, I did want to talk to him. I'll call, I'll call him back. And as a business person, you know, you're going you're gonna to probably pick up the phone or you're going to get that voicemail and you'll end up connecting. And you'll know who's so I think that's really interesting technology and, and, and the way people are now today about not picking up the phone if they don't know the call you know the number. Um, I think that's what was how, how did you formulate that strategy? I mean, is that kind of what went into it? Well, no, it, it, uh, the, the voicemail thing came afterwards after a year of us using the tool. I remember someone saying, Man, I got this ringless voicemail thing. And I was like, well, what is that? And well, one, I read up the rules to see if that was even legal, right? right. So I read up the rules and it's legal as long as you, you have, you know, consent, you have this and that. But, you know, every dealer has consent on everybody. You know, if we sold you a car, we, we told you in our, our privacy statement that we're going to reach back out to you at some point to try to help sell you another car, right? right. So we already have your data on file and we, we have that relationship with you. Um, and so I was saying, man, so we already have basically all the pieces together and I just need to implement this technology into my technology. So I had to source a couple of APIs and APIs is just a, a nice name for access point. So you just basically get an access point from their, from their technology to yours and just kind of put the pieces together. And before you know it, I, I was able to do that with some, you know, a little bit of, uh, money and uh, uh some time and sure enough i can i can generate phone calls all day and it's pretty neat like yesterday i got 84 people to call me back and we convert a lot of appointments off that you know um what's uh, what's amazing though is so some calls i'll get a 10 percent response some i'll get a 30 percent response but there's still you know 70 percent of your customers i can't that won't call me back right or email sms phone none of them no so where Facebook and Instagram come into play, I put that same t same owner base into Facebook with a message, a video, and I will target those people just to get that awareness to make sure they understand why I'm calling. Hey, you've got equity in your, your vehicle. Hey, you've got, uh, you paid a higher interest rate. I can lower your interest rate today. Call me and let me show you how you can do it. And if I target those specific messages, you, you see those people clicking through to your website and trying to come in. So it's, uh, it's pretty neat technology. You know, I, I don't know that I'm the first one to think of it, but I'm the first one that's actually applied it and figured it out how to, you know, execute on it for sure. Absolutely. It's, it's, um, so let me, let me get, let me take me through a process of how you would go about, you know, I, I so I at some point bought a car from you and now I'm coming up for my, my, maybe my lease or maybe I've, 
Um, maybe I left you guys for a while and you want to try to get me back. How would this whole, this software, what would the process, you know, how would you go through that whole entire sales process? With it? So every month I'll be sending out every month. You're, if you're six months before you're going to expire, you're going to start seeing a message on Facebook. That's just going to say, Hey, your, your loan's about to expire. Let's get you back in. Let's swap you out. Um, this is how we do it and just break it down in that respect on a video um, and just an email that we send out the phone call. You'll hear my voicemail saying, Hey, six months early, come on in. I could probably, you know, break you out of that lease six months early, get you another vehicle. Um, and just every month till you decide you're ready to come in, you're going to hear that message in Facebook, Instagram, uh, you're going to get an email, you're going to get a phone call and until you come in and, 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 and you, you buy a car for me. So that's pretty. That's, how, how important <laughs> do you think, like, you know, what, what have you found the diligence level you have to, you need in order to convert people um, to this, to, to the actual sales process? What, what, like what's the kind of lead time that you found and how, how many contacts do you think you have to have? I don't really think it's that many. I think some people take, you know, till they're about right that they procrastinate, right? They want that last, that the last month. But a lot of times I get a lot of people in earlier. I mean, it's just, you know, when I look at, if I get a hundred people to call me back, I will convert 30 of them to an appointment and I'll probably sell, you know, 15, 16 cars off that, those, that one voicemail that I sent out. People always and want to know, how do they get, like, so they're in a lease. They hate this car, right, that, that they're in. And now I start shopping around, and I, and I, and I come to, to, to your dealer, and, you know, but I have six months or, or, or nine months or something like that in my lease. How do I get out of that lease and come to you? Like, how, how do I do that? Well, so it, if you just bought it within a month, it's it's probably not going to happen unless you got some money down or you have some some negative equity that you have amazing credit. You're going to roll over because you know just like in any vehicle or anything that you really buy, it loses value immediately, right? You can't buy a shirt, wear it for a week, and say, "All right, I'm going to turn around and right. trade it." You know, it's just it's just part of what happens in in the retail industry, right? So things devaluate as soon as you buy them. The example, I, I bought a, a table five years ago that I paid all the money for. And then I moved to another house just recently and I, that I didn't need the table. And I never even used the table. It was a dining room table I never used. And I I got called a, some company to see if they'd pick it up. And they, they offered me, you know, a tenth of what I paid for it. And I'm, I just, it, it broke my heart. I was just like, man, this is, it's even worse than buying a car. I mean, this <laughs> made me sick to my stomach you know i'm like damn that's just that's unfortunate right but you know but you know if you can if you had it for you know if you have a 36 months and you've got you know you've been in it for two and a half years we could probably get you out of that and maybe at a break even point in some cases because some cars hold their value better than others some residuals and some uh um what do you call it? Some, some of the, the incentivized uh, rates you might've had back then are, are in your favor right now, especially on a Tacoma, for example, I've got some Tacomas that I've had people in them for like a year and a half. They come out and try to trade them in and they, they, they almost get what they paid for. I mean, it's crazy to me sometimes, wow. you know, those TRD pros. I mean, there's certain cars that just, they never, depreciate it seems like i mean i, I don't even get it I, for example i bought my wife a lexus one of those suvs um and we ended up having like three more kids after that and so i had to trade her out and get a minivan right she really loved me for that but um so i, I get this lexus and two years later we drive we drove it for two years i mean i own i i, I probably put twenty thousand miles on it and I literally probably lost five grand and most, most of the scenarios you probably would have lost, you know, 50% of the value, you know what I'm saying? But that Lexus held its value real well that, I mean, I paid a certain amount for it. And I, from what I drove off the lot, it only cost me five grand for two years. I couldn't even believe it. That's unbelievable. 
All right? Yeah. I guess <laughs> those are the things I guess you got when you go and buy a car. That's a good or lease a car. That's a good thing to know um, which cars hold their value because it gives you kind of, I guess leverage if you want to do something later on. Exactly. So, and, and you know, Lexus, Toyota, I mean, they do pretty well. I know there's some other mark, uh, brands out there that do well as well, but, uh, you know, Toyota, I've never done, gone wrong with them. You, you wrote a book. You wrote two books, you said, right? Yes. So you wrote two books. What was that process like for you to, to write those books? And obviously, you're, one of them, you're going off of your actual experience or something you had done. Well, well, actually, both of them I, I wrote off of my experience. So I, I, when I was a salesman, I, I, I wrote down exactly what it would take to be a, you know, to sell 30 cars a month. And I wrote the whole, the whole plan. I said, oh. then it started real easy. I wrote the outline and then I know the business, you know, as well as I could, that I just started writing down. I wrote the outline. I had like 10 chapters and then I just wrote them down and just, you know, you don't really need much to write a book, right? And so as long as it's good content, you know what you're talking about. Um, I put it all in there and got a, an editor. She helped me out. She did, does an amazing job, by the way. So if you ever need a, a, an editor, I definitely would recommend her to anyone. Um, but then she helped me, you know, get it uh, put, put and do the whole thing. I mean, it was pretty, it was pretty amazing. That, that's really cool. And, and what was your time frame? And how, how, how fast did you turn it around? And... It, it took me approximately a, a whole year. Okay. So, and I, and I could have probably done it more, like I could have done it faster, but I was, I was involved in, you know, building this business, doing the software, uh, working out, having kids. I mean, you know, just life, you know, I was doing a lot of things. And so when I, if I would have just focused on it more, I probably could have done it faster, but it, it just took me some time because, you know, I, I was doing it at my leisure almost. So. Absolutely. What, what would, would you consider yourself um, a natural born salesperson or someone that it really has to grind and, and figure things out along the way or, or some combination of both? You know, I've never considered myself a, you know, I look at being a, a sales professional as someone that just, you, you really train, you, you, you master your craft, but it's really, a, as long as you, you can talk to people, you're going to be fine. I think that as long as you can relate, you, you know how to talk to people. I mean, it's really all about communication at the end of the day. If you can't, if you can't communicate well with your clients or with your just people, it, you won't be able to get that message across. hundred percent. It's, it's interesting because I was talking actually a guy that I, that I coach with, but he, he's a, a salesman in, in, his day, in his day job and we're sitting there, we're just uh, eating breakfast and, he goes, man, he's like, you're a heck of a salesman. And I'm like, you know, I've always thought of myself as like a founder, business owner, built businesses and stuff. And I sat there and I thought to myself, and I'm like, you know, I guess if exactly what you said, if, if relating to people and understanding, you know, kind of trying to understand what they're thinking, because I'm always trying to understand what someone else is thinking, what helps them do well, you know, um, and then – even if it's one small thing, if I can apply it to my life, it helps me, me do better. That's great. If I can help someone else even better. Um, but I, I thought that was so interesting. And actually I took a step back and I thought, yeah, you know, I, I guess the, 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 the whole process of your life is really in accomplishing things really is if you don't know how to sell yourself and, and you don't have to help, know how to help people relate to what you're trying to offer them or what you might be doing them or or even just your daily conversation if you if you don't have that skill set that ability to help people understand where you come from see your side whether they agree with you or not and then relate to what their side is and then figure out how you can help them um you're, you're going to struggle not just you know in business or ways but really in life i mean people will struggle in life if it's a skill set that has to be developed yes absolutely and, and it's just like any muscle, you got to train it, you got to train it. So it's, uh, it's good stuff, man. I, I really like what you're doing, man. I think, um, I, I think that you, you, you've, you found a new fan. I'm going to be listening. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be listening to everything, man. It's going to be good. Good. Very good. T tell everybody before we go, tell uh, everyone where they can find you, obviously 
um, you know, you know, from a, from a car standpoint, uh, where they can find your software and then how they can reach out to you, your books, everything. Let, let, um, let you can go to my website, chrisjosephmartinez.com, or you can go to theautominer.com. You can find me on Facebook at, at Chris uh, J Martinez ATX um, on Instagram. You can find me anywhere. I LinkedIn. You, you can find me. And, and the software is autominer.com, right? The autominer.com. The, 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 okay. The autominer.com. All right. Perfect. Fantastic. I really enjoyed talking with you. Um, I, I'm fascinated with what you do. I'm actually going to check, check out more in depth that autominer because I think that's, that's an interesting thing. I, I find so many people are trying to do in pieces what you're doing as a whole. Oh, yeah. You know, you got an SMS over here. You got a, a call maker over here. They're charging you two ninety nine dollars for this and that <laughs> this. And, and then, then I got to, you know, I got my email system. I got to pay for that. Um, I mean, from a car sales standpoint and, and eventually, shoot, you, you know, you may be able to leverage that into with just with another cover name uh, into into many many different other industries. Um, but that inclusive thing, like there is nothing out there. I can't tell you how many times I'm spending money for you know maybe a thousand dollars a month on different things. Where if someone could bring it all together, and, and obviously that's something that you do. So I'm gonna I'm gonna check that out. And yeah, no, it's pretty neat, man. I, yeah. Um, we're, we're looking to expand on that for sure and um, I'm in different verticals as well. So I, I think it's going to be a win for everybody. I think the way we can reach out and nurture your customer base, it's important for everybody. I mean, if you're not focusing on your, your relationships with your clients today, you're missing out big. No doubt about it. Well, thanks, Chris, so much for being on. I really appreciate it. Um, for, the sex, uh, for the success for life podcast, um, We'll have this vlog up on on you on YouTube. We'll have it going on there for iTunes. The actual uh, audio. Thanks so much for being on, Chris, and and we'll talk to you real soon. All right, man. We'll keep in touch, man. You take care. Thank you. All right, man. Bye.